Good morning, everyone. I'm going to try to post this to YouTube in the aftermath of the 11 o'clock scheduled live video cast on Facebook Live. And that way, those of you who are not able to be on Facebook or choose not to be on Facebook, you can access this particular thread, communication thread, anytime you want during the course of the day or even tomorrow if you choose. Uh, I am under some time constraints, unfortunately. It has to be under 15 minutes for it to be able to be posted. And so I will give you an abbreviated worship service uh, and do that to the best of my ability and hope that you'll be able to get this and still feel as if you are part of the Advent worshiping community during these very difficult days. And so we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's Gospel is from the Gospel of John chapter 11, in which Jesus raises his friend Lazarus from the grave. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You know, we live in these very, very strange times, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We, Everything seems to be going in slow motion. I find myself spending more time, it feels anyway, being a morale officer rather than a pastor. Everybody's schedule is upended at this time, and there is a growing sense of anxiety among all of us as to how long this will take what will happen once we are beyond the COVID-19 epidemic, and how life will be forever changed as a result. 
We can find ourselves being impatient in this process. We can also find ourselves asking questions as to where God is in the midst of all of this. Martha and Mary's questions of Jesus and Jesus' unlikely timeline for coming to be near them and also to provide an opportunity to heal Lazarus confounds the situation for all of them at this point. And so we understand those questions. We too want to know where Jesus is in all of this. And so we look to him and sometimes we are inclined to ask all of those same questions. If you had been here, none of this would have happened. If you had been here, our faith would have been restored and we would have been able to continue our lives as we knew them. But the fact of the matter is that we know that life is not always the way that we want it to be. The routine of our schedule has been upended. There are people who are getting sick. There are people who are dying. And we wonder where Jesus is. And the fact of the matter is, is that the gospel tells us that Jesus is indeed present. And he is present not as a quick fix for us or as a cure, but he is present in his, the gift of his incarnation and that he is in our midst and in us and through us and with all of humanity in order to be able to experience all of the confusion and the pain and the difficulties that we experience, as well as stand in solidarity with us in our living and in our dying. And that is the greatest presence and the greatest promise that we can have in the midst of this. Moreover, even if we're clumsy about being able to be in touch with one another, and if you're not a particularly techie person like I am not a particularly techie person, nonetheless, we can still call one another and provide support and solace and care for each other as the body of Christ. We can also share our love and the gifts of grace that God has given us through Christ with one another to sustain each other, to care for each other, to lift each other up for the sake of one another, for the sake of the visible presence of the body of Christ in the world, and for the sake of all who long to receive gifts of healing and wholeness and life. Because right now it seems as if life is a precious commodity that we just don't see much of. And yet Jesus promises to be the resurrection and the life. He promises to breathe the breath of resurrection life into us even when we feel as if everything is lost. We're isolated, we feel lonely. We don't know what will become of us. It's hard to imagine what life is going to be like beyond all of this. And yet we have the great promise from Christ himself. I am with you always, even to the close of the age. Christ promises that the resurrection is also for the here and now. It is here for us to live in the light of his love and rest in the knowledge that he is with us in all circumstances and that God will give strength to all of us in the midst of this trialing, trial time. Be well, dear church. Care for one another as you are able to in this difficult time. Love one another and reach out to each other and provide support and care, even as Christ reaches out in love, offers his life for our sake, dies for us, and is raised again by God's power so that our future is always certain and we live in the sure and certain hope of his resurrection. Amen. Let us pray together as our Lord and Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty bless our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen.